From the sands of Kitty Hawk to the launch pads of Cape Kennedy, American aeronautical history encompasses a vast assortment of one of the most interesting but largely unknown chapters in the annals of American aviation is the operation of the rigid airships by the United States Navy. Many people are familiar with the famous German Zeppelins, Graf Zeppelin and Hindenburg, but few know about the many successful flights and aviation milestones that marked the United States Navy's employment of rigid airships in the 1920s and 30s. Much of our early engineering knowledge in aeronautics came from the design and construction of these pioneering aircraft. Although they last flew in the late 1930s, U.S. rigid airships will forever hold a special place in the evolution of commercial transportation and military operations on the leading edge of flight. Several brief crewed powered balloon flights were made in France between 1852 and 1884. Then on October 19, 1901, Brazilian Alberto Santos Dumont preceded the Wright brothers by more than two years with the first acclaimed prize-winning powered flight of about seven miles from St. Cloud to the Eiffel Tower and back. Referred to as a dirigible from the French word for steerable, Santos Dumont's lighter-than-air vehicle was soon followed by a motorized rigid frame dirigible balloon designed and manufactured by a retired German army general and inventor, Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin. Zeppelin's dirigible differed structurally from the earlier non-rigid airship, which is now commonly known as a blimp. A blimp depends on the pressure of air diaphragms called balanets inside the blimp's main envelope to control the pressure of the lifting gas, which maintains the envelope's aerodynamic shape. The skeletal framework of a rigid airship contains individual gas cells in a network of transverse frames, longitudinal girders, and bracing wires. Because its gas was compartmentalized into a series of cells, a rigid airship could remain in reduced buoyant flight if one or two gas cells were damaged. In 1910, Count von Zeppelin founded the world's first regularly organized air transport concern, the German Airship Navigation Company. Four commercial airships called Zeppelins after their inventor introduced comfort and luxury to air tourism, carrying 10,000 paying passengers safely on 1,588 flights over four years of operation. When the world was plunged into war in 1914, the Zeppelin took on a new mission with the German Army and Navy. Zeppelins performed scouting and bombing runs deep into enemy territory. They frequently operated in overcast skies, receiving target identification from an observer in a so-called cloud car that was lowered just beneath the cloud cover. However, the hydrogen used as the lifting gas eventually proved to be the Zeppelin's Achilles heel. Allied aircraft and artillery found a way to reach the Zeppelin's operating altitude and set the airships on fire. Germany's cross-channel raids on England ended after 300 raids and 1,000 scouting missions. Nevertheless, the airship's possibilities were not ignored by the British and the French, who took advantage of downed Zeppelins to gather design knowledge, and so did the United States. America's development of rigid airships was undertaken by the United States Navy. Dedicated officers like Admiral William A. Moffat championed the use of lighter-than-air aircraft as long-range scouts carrying fighter aircraft for use by the Atlantic and Pacific fleets. The first American rigid airship was the ZR-1, or Shenandoah, a modified copy of the German L-49 captured in France. Shenandoah's structural parts were made of new aluminum alloys, state-of-the-art materials that proved to be a major advance in aviation technology, which were later used in heavier-than-air aircraft. 
parts were fabricated at the Philadelphia Naval Aircraft Factory. Then subsections of the rigid framework were brought by truck and rail to the new hangar at the Naval Air Station in Lakehurst, New Jersey, where they were assembled. Although Shenandoah was originally designed for hydrogen inflation, safety concerns led to the decision to create her static lift by using 2.1 million cubic feet of helium gas, which was both non-flammable and very scarce. The gas was contained in 20 gas-tight cells tailored to fit within Shenandoah's 680-foot-long hull. She was powered in flight by six 300-horsepower Packard engines, which enabled her to reach a maximum speed of 68 miles per hour. The ZR-1 made her maiden flight on September 4, 1923, and was christened USS Shenandoah the same year on October 19. Her early flights proved that Shenandoah could fly in heavy weather. She was purposely moored on a high mast in winter conditions so that the Navy could observe her non-flight reaction to strong winds. On January 16, 1924, a 78 mile per hour gust of wind struck her starboard bow, damaging the top fin and rolling her so severely that she was wrenched from the mast. Although two gas cells deflated, an alert mast watch released ballast, allowing Shenandoah to balloon downwind until her crew powered up her engines. The incident, which turned into Shenandoah's 20th flight, concluded about eight and a half hours later as she limped back to base, where she was hangered and completely repaired. Shenandoah was the first airship to moor to a floating mast, operating with the USS Potoka, a modified collier or coal ship. During 1924, she flew along the periphery of the United States, mooring at masts in Texas, California, and Washington before returning to New Jersey. On September 3, 1925, after two years of service, Shenandoah suffered structural failure during an unforecast thunderstorm and crashed in southern Ohio. 29 of the 43 men on board survived. The ZR-3, which had a volume of 2.4 million cubic feet, was built in Germany and delivered to the United States as a World War I reparation. She arrived at Lakehurst in 1924 after a then astounding 81.5 hour non-stop flight. She was docked in Hangar 1, bled of her hydrogen content, and reinflated with helium. Because helium was monitored and conserved very carefully, the ZR-1 and the ZR-3 could not be inflated at the same time, prompting humorist Will Rogers to comment, the Navy has two airships, but only one set of helium. The ZR-3 was christened USS Los Angeles by the First Lady, Mrs. Calvin Coolidge, at Naval Air Station Anacostia, Washington, D.C. Even though she was limited by treaty to training and experimental operations, Los Angeles established her own series of firsts, landing aboard the aircraft carrier USS Saratoga, making the first non-stop 2,250-mile flight from Lakehurst to the Panama Canal Zone, demonstrating her ability to recover and launch aircraft in flight, and proving her endurance with the fleet with three weeks of continuous operations from USS Potoka. The ZR-3 was a flying laboratory and schoolroom in eight years of commissioned service, completing 331 flights, totaling more than 4,300 hours before she was grounded in a healthy condition in 1932 for budgetary reasons. She then served as a ground test vehicle until she was dismantled in late 1939. The next rigid airships to be commissioned by the Navy were the flying aircraft carriers USS Akron and USS Macon. Built by the Goodyear Zeppelin Company in its mammoth hangar at Akron, Ohio, Akron and Macon were nearly identical twins. These giants of the skies, each with a volume of 6.5 million cubic feet, had almost three times the volumes of the Los Angeles. Their designers incorporated lessons learned in the operation of the smaller rigids. These refinements included giving the airships three keels rather than one to support their 785 foot length installing eight 560 horsepower Maybach engines, which delivered propulsive force through gearboxes to propellers that could be both reversed and vectored in thrust.
and using condensed water vapor from engine exhaust to compensate for the lost weight of expended fuel. These improvements greatly facilitated the operation of the scout planes that were lowered by trapeze from their midship hangar for launch and recovery over wide stretches of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The Sparrowhawk pilots, like their counterparts on surface carriers, relied on the aircraft's arresting hooks. Only these men did it in mid-air. The Sparrowhawk's lightweight design for extended operations from Akron and Macon led to later breakthroughs in heavier-than-air aircraft design. The ZRS-4 was christened USS Akron by Mrs. Herbert Hoover on August 8, 1931 in Akron, Ohio. After her maiden flight on September 23, 1931, she was transferred to Lakehurst and departed from there for naval maneuvers on both coasts. This pattern continued until Akron was lost on April 4, 1933, in a storm over the Atlantic. All but three aboard were lost, including the chief of the Bureau of Aeronautics, Rear Admiral William A. Moffett. Just three weeks before Akron went down, Mrs. Moffett had christened the ZRS-5, the USS Macon. The airship's maiden flight was on April 21, 1933. With Los Angeles decommissioned and Akron lost, Macon was pressured to demonstrate the capabilities of lighter-than-air aircraft. She was flown with minor structural failures that she sustained during turbulent low-altitude flight in cross-country operations. The failures could have been correctable only with an extended hangar layup. While flying off Point Sur, California on February 12, 1935, Macon's upper fin failed, causing the loss of both full control and helium. Macon made a limited controlled ditching in the Pacific, losing only two personnel. The United States Navy built no more rigid airships after these losses. Instead, it concentrated on smaller, non-rigid airships, which later served effectively for anti-submarine patrol and escort during World War II. And that is another story. The rigid airship may be gone from the scene, but its major impact on aviation will always be recognized. Many of the aeronautical designs, materials, and technologies that we take for granted today were developed when these huge lighter-than-air aircraft sailed the skies on the leading edge of flight. 